Hello, and thank you for joining our interview series for the Baltimore Economic Leadership League, also known as Bell. I am your host, Renard Brown, and currently serving as the executive director for Bell. Bell is a nonprofit community development financial organization designed to support women, minority, and rural owned businesses in and throughout the Baltimore area in capital micro lending, providing business resources and education, and also providing a vibrant community for businesses to network. Please visit our site at joinbell.org to learn more. Uh, these interview sessions are designed to get to know our board members as well as to gain valuable perspectives and key insights uh, from those business experts. With that, I'd like to dive right in and introduce our guest, Lynn Jenkins. Lynn is an experienced business consultant with over 30 years of proven leadership in the spheres of business and partner development, capture management, small business coaching, and is very, very accomplished in the fields of both private and public sectors of business. Lynn, thank you very much for the opportunity to meet with you today. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks again. Let's jump right into the interview. Just a few questions. So Lynn, can you tell me a bit about your background and how you came to be a business development consultant? Yes, I started years ago in my, my high school years of doing um, summer jobs, working for IBM. And I learned that I loved solving customer problems. And I loved working with people, and especially as I grew into my career after joining IBM, loved working with minority small business, especially minority-owned, women-owned, service-disabled, veteran-owned, hub zone. So really supporting and giving back in the spirit of my grandfather, who worked for the post office and loved recruiting and encouraging minority uh, people to join the post office. Wow, wow, that's a really inspirational background. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> Um, one of the things our listeners would like to know, what is a good book that you've read that's been really impactful to you? And can you tell us a little bit why about why it means so much? I can. Uh, I, I, I'm an avid reader, and, but one of the books that stands out most to me is The Secret. And the reason I loved it, and I have to actually have to kind of look at my notes from this, but it talked about you will come to know who you really are. You'll know the magnificence of what awaits in your life and that you can have, be, or do anything you want. So that inspired me. And it's kind of a mixture of philosophy, religious, spiritual, other. And, um, but I looked at all the readings and it helped really form the latter part of my career in terms of who I wanted to be. Wow, wow, sounds like a really foundational read. Wow, I, I definitely think that'll be beneficial. So. Talk to us a little bit about what interested you about the Baltimore Economic Leadership League and why you joined. Um, so my, my passion was, has always been, I shouldn't say was, but my passion is still to work with, help, assist, mentor, and share all I've learned throughout my career. And part of my reason to join is that I'd worked with Will Holmes in the past, um, a true inspiration, mentor, you know, I, I like just an ideologue to look up to. Will is um, everything that you'd want to be for small businesses, caring, giving back. And I thought there's nothing better that I'd like to do than to be a part of that organization and understand what he's trying to do and is doing for small businesses is so important to me. And it's transcended throughout my career in larger organizations, smaller, and even currently where our large company wants to help small businesses. So being a part of this organization is really, it's an important part of him and my career today. And what I hope that other people would want to join and support. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, our founder Will Holmes has really done a lot throughout uh, Baltimore and the surrounding counties of Maryland. Um, so uh, definitely good to hear him get a good shout out from you. Thank you very much for that. Um, to step a little bit more into your uh, field of business, what advice would you give to someone who is seeking to work in the field of business development? And then what are some career pitfalls that you would recommend avoiding? Right. Um, I think for people that are looking in business development, you need to be honest about what you're trying to do for the client. I always call it the what's in it for me, the WFIM, W-F-I-M, like what's in it for me from the client perspective. So always think about what do they need? What are their gaps? Not so much about what you're trying to sell or communicate or articulate, but I think for business development, it's important to listen actively. So I think it's been difficult in the last you know, couple of years, especially with pandemic, 
to be an active listener. So people passively listen, they're listening to things in the background and, you know, coffee, tea, you know, coffee, teapots, dogs, children, other, but just to be active and listen to what, what, what people, stakeholders, what people are looking for. And once you figure out where that path is, I think you can offer some great solutions. So I'd say as in terms of business consultancy, for me, it's always been listening to what the clients want or stakeholders, and then applying a solution to them. I think uh, for your second part of the question, what kind of advice that I may have not listened to when people just say, stick to one thing. No, I never stuck to one thing. I thought I wanna learn to do many things and it's okay to do that. So if you're grounded in a foundational you know, area, it's great to pursue that, but just be open to other areas that may be of interest. So whether it's following the trends of artificial intelligence, machine learning, or customer experience, be open to what is going to encompass the skill set you've already acquired and build upon that. So don't be scared to go outside of your, not the security area, but just don't be scared to expand and always be a continuous learner, a lifelong learner, which I would say after X number of years in my career has only been just joyful to me, pleasure, joyful, rewarding. And it makes you feel like you're not going to work every day. You just enjoy waking up every day. Be well-rounded and a good breadth of experience yes. is key. Exactly. Um, so what trends do you see, just to try to make sure that we're, we're bringing a lot of value to the folks who listen in, what trends do you see in contemporary, in, in your field, in your current business field? What trends do you see developing? Right. I see probably as most of uh, this nation, a lot of remote learning, remote working, distancing, and uh, it's changed the way that we do business, but it's gone back to the basics. I think it's one of the trends. I'd say in the federal marketplace, um, a lot of the opportunities are now put on what they call these best, uh, best in class contracting vehicles. So I think the trend is to make sure that you align yourself with complementary small businesses or large businesses in functional areas or technical areas where you excel and to make sure you have those alliances because no one can do it on their own or no one should want to do it on their own if in terms of growth opportunities. Um, and I think the other trend is really toward you know, innovation. Everyone's looking for IT modernization, cybersecurity data. So watch the technical trends and make sure that your skill sets, your company's core competencies align with those trend areas. But um, and I would say, stay current. So you need to read the regular you know, publications, stay informed, watch what companies are doing, watch the trends, and make sure that you can align or pivot what you're currently doing to those current and new types of opportunities. Flexibility as watchword. I like it. I like it. Um, so let's wrap up with this. We like to make sure we're leaving people with a something lasting they can fix in their mind. What's a favorite quote or saying that you have and, and why? What does it mean so much to you? I have a good one, I think. So <laughs> okay. it's a, someone I worked with, uh, so I can't take credit for it. I use it as mine, but someone else shared it with me. He was a great person, passed away some years ago at a very young age. But what he said is never let anyone sit on the other end of your seesaw because no one deserves to bring you up or take you down. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's correct. Meaning you're responsible for your own happiness, your success, your future. You wanna be accountable for what you can do in life and succeed. And you shouldn't portray that or project that on other people in terms of holding you back. You have to find a way. And that's by not letting anybody else get on that other end of the seesaw. So that has always resonated. And, um, and I, uh, that's probably my favorite one. I have many more, but that's my favorite one. Wow, that, what a trenchant comment. That, that really is something. Man, I'm at the, I, you can't see it, but I'm writing that down as we speak. So, uh, okay. I stole it. You can steal it too. I definitely will. I definitely will. Well, Lynn, that ends our interview today. And I'd like to thank you for your time and contributions. Uh, and, and on behalf of the Baltimore Economic Leadership League at joinbell.org, um, thank. I'd like to also thank the folks listening for their time and hope everyone makes it a great day. Thank you. Thank you.